So now we're going to look at the findings of the market survey that I conducted. So the market survey took place in January this year. It consisted of 17 meetings with various stakeholders, as Kristen would have mentioned, included persons from like immigration to the Chamber of Commerce to separate companies. And the sectors of focus are the sectors illustrated there, which are professional services, ICT, and construction. So for each services sector, this is how we're going to break down looking at the sector. We're going to look at the services that can be provided, the mode of delivery, the power structure, standards and certification, regulatory framework, and the market penetration strategies. So we start with professional services. So for in Barbados, based on our research and based on the feedback of the persons that we met with, the two professional services sectors that we identified that had the most potential were management consultancy services and, and accounting services. Now, both sets of services, you can see the focus is really on areas that deal with results of the downturn. So for management consultancy services, the professionals that we spoke to, most people were coming to them for things like HR optimization, um, how to minimize their costs, how to best utilize their resources. And accounting services, similar, dealt with financial advisory services, tax restructuring services, and business restructuring services. So the services that there was an uptake in related directly to the downturn. Okay, so the mode of delivery, as Jamila, as Jamila all have stated earlier, it is basically the manner in which you can export your service. And there are two things you need to take into consideration. One, how feasible it is for you to do the service and then how your client or your customer would like to consume the service. So for management services, most of the persons, the persons that we interviewed all stated that they do the majority of their work online, the interaction with their clients is online, and that's basically because of cost and logistical feasibility. But they said like the initial meetings to actually get the business to build that, that relationship depended on network and face-to-face -face meetings. For accounting services, in this instance, while you can use mode one, while you can use online services, their clients are very resistant to dealing with finances online. So even those persons in the market actually indicated that they, all their meetings, all their interactions with their clients is face to face. Okay, so the power structure. Basically, this is the culture or the type of businesses in the sector and the power brokers. So in the sector of management consultancy, most of the organizations are small. The large, we spoke to the one, the most successful, which was 21 firms, 21 persons in the firm. Um, but every, the other two that we met with, their firms had no more than eight people. Uh, but they indicated that there was a shift locally in terms of their clients. Before, they were Bayesian owned businesses, so they had access, was the word they used, to the power brokers. So they had access to the head of BSNT or the head of the cost of manning. Now there's a shift because a lot of those businesses are becoming are owned by Trinidadian conglomerates. So BSNT is owned by Neela Massey Group and cost of manning is owned by Ansem Cal. So because of that, there's a shift in the power dynamics and a lot of the executive decisions are being made in Trinidad. That was their feedback. Accounting services, on the other hand, is different. The structure of the, the industry is different. It's based on multinational firms, Insignia and KPMG, the same players that we see here. Even though the heads, so the partners, may be Barbadian nationals, decision making is not based, it's not, act, it doesn't base, it's not based on, nor do they act like a Bayesian firm. So that's different. Power structure. In terms of standards and certification, management services, uh, they indicated that degrees, degree from University of West Indies, as well as an international, unrecognized international university, is recognized. But more than that, reputation and the quality of your work and your credibility, as in your past projects, are what really gets you business. So it's not so much based on your education, but more your reputation and your credibility, the ability to show that you've done the work before. Accounting services, um, you have to be a registered accountant, which we are coming to now. In terms of the regulatory framework, 
while you may be a chartered accountant in Trinidad and Tobago, to become a chartered accountant and to practice accountancy services in Barbados, you have to be resident for six months and you have to pay the fee of the chartered accountant, um, Institute of Chartered Accountants, and that is 1250. And all the fees for all of the professional associations are the same. So you can't, you have, you can't just go across and provide your service. You, will, you could do it under the cover of an already established person and just work as a consultant for him, but he has to be the one to eventually do the business. So, the market penetration strategies we devised based on the feedback of the persons in the sector. It really would hinge on building relationships in Trinidad with large conglomerates over there who have who are making decisions for Barbadian firms and trying to build a relationship there. It's noteworthy to say that in our meeting while we're there, and some Cal, well, the Costa Manning announced that they're going to refurbish or eight of their stores, as well as modernize, modernize the stores, so modernize the way business is done, modernize the whole systems related to the stores. And BSNT is going to introduce a superstore concept, like how Hilo has superstores here. They're going to introduce that concept, starting with the super center in Warren. Construction services. So the three services we focused on were architectural services, engineering services, and general construction services. All right, so for each, um, the mode of delivery, the manner in which the service can be exported, architectural services is online. Um, one, a couple of the contractors who we spoke to indicated that they, the majority of the work they do with their architect, um, the, the joke that most of it is done online, and that is the creation of the um, 3D computerized drawings where he goes through the entire project. He says once construction commences, then they expect the architect to be there, but prior to that, most of their interaction is online. Um, engineering services, similar, it starts off with online. Um, we spoke to two engineering companies, both, both of whom stated that because of the downturn in the economy, they have let go some people and actually consume, consult with engineers online. But both of those firms were international con sub subsidi subsidiaries of an international firm, so that has to be taken into account. Similar, once con construction commences, there's an expectation of face to face contact. For general contractors, you have two options. You can establish a firm, or you can offer your services on contract basis based on um, projects. Okay, so the power structure. It's most distinct for contractors, which is why we start off with them. Uh, there are three major players in the construction industry, and that's Innotech. Jada Construction, Construction and Rothery Construction. Um, I met with both in Tech and Jada Construction. Both, all, all three have extensive ties to the government. Um, in fact, during one of the interviews, one of the contractors went on, on a very long soliloquy about how fantastic the government is, all the money it's pumping into the economy, how great the projects are, stuff, stuff. Um, all, both Jada and Inotech do design, build, construct, finance. So they get involved in the financing of their projects. Jada in particular indicated that they finance almost the majority of their projects with the exception of extreme large scale projects. Jada also indicated that according to him, the trends in the market are housing, as in low cost housing, which is of course linked to what Jamila was saying about the government pumping money into that. Um, condominiums, high-scale condominiums, over $2 million, and uh, larger projects like uh, building of a booth in Bridgetown, as well as a, a tourist uh, shipping, a cruise shipping terminal. Uh, both Inotech and Jada indicated that they often sub subcontract design elements to architectural firms, which I suspect we will hear from Mr. Herrera when he speaks about it. 
or whether it's factual or not. <laughs> so power structure for the rest of the other two sectors, uh, the Barbadian architects and engineers have been heavily hit by the downturn in the economy. Basically, according to them, domestic demand, which is what they depend on, like housing, like general housing, as in individual Barbadian housing, has completely dried up. Uh, one, one engineer indicated, one architect indicated where he would have done 12 a year, he's now doing like two. So it's really, it's, it's a really dry sector for them. It's really, the downturn has hit firms, uh, architectural firms in particular, and engineering firms very hard. Okay, so the standards for the architectural architects, they have to meet the requirements but they do not, need to, do not need to have an actual international certification. And similarly for engineers, um, general contractors are expected to comply with laws and regulations related to building and health and safety at work, um, but no specific building code or specific building standards. So architects, they have to be registered with the Institute of Architects. The architects, we met an institute, and the institute said there is no residency requirement. But you need to pay 1250 US to work in Barbados. That fee went up from 500 US last year. It's now 1250. The reason for the increase basically is uh, taxes. The government needed money, so they've basically done it across most professional sectors. Uh, the, it, the architects that we met were very distressed by the increase, um, particularly at a time when the, the sector is contracting so much for them. Engineers, the same thing, but engineers, there is a requirement, a residency requirement. You have to work for four years to become a registered engineer in Barbados. What, uh, what the institute indicated that people do is that they work under a registered person and they work as a consultant initially and then when they work the four years then they apply. General contractors have to, apply, have to adhere to town and, plan, town, and, town and country plan division rules and regulations. As I said, there's no building code and they have to adhere to safety at work, safety and health, healthy at work act in Barbados. So, Export TT does provide some financial assistance, so this is just based on the interaction and what I found, some of the things that we could possibly co-finance. Um, so, market penetration strategies, according to several, there are several construction projects in train in Barbados. Um, the one, the birth, the extra birth in the port is already it's supposed to commence in June, according to the contractor, as well as the housing projects have already started. If you, when you go along Barbados, you see them building. Um, the firms indicated that they are interested in subcontracting some of the, large, the work of the larger projects to smaller subcontractors. Also, there are several large stores, as I indicated before, that uh, Trinidadian firms are going to execute in Barbados, which presents an opportunity. And local engineering services, as I said, is a very low, there's a very slow demand for your service, but uh, they can benefit from partnering with larger firms who have already established links with the construction companies. So for ICT, the services of strategic interest were software development, computer engineering, app development, and ICT infrastructural services. Um, based on motor delivery, most we interviewed three ICT firms. All of them indicated that the majority of what they do, they do online because of the nature of their work and the expectations of their client. Uh, standards and certification. Uh, there are no specific standards and certification required for the market no ISO or um, ITIS or any standard like that was required. Reputation is critical for you to get work in the market. They expect you to be able to illustrate that you can do the job, that you're credible, that you have done it in the past. Uh, 
um, co-financing from the sector, uh, assistance and leader fees directly related to penetrating the Asian markets. Uh, the majority of work done by ICT firms, the three that we met with, related to some kind of mitigating cost or eliminating some kind of cost because of the nature of the economy, that is what the job, the kind of jobs they were getting. So just a little bit on the regulation. Temporary stay. Uh, Trinidadians as CARICOM nationals, once you have a degree or you are a sports person or you have a CVQ, qualification that's recognized, you can apply for a skill certificate. Uh, the skill certificate is given out by the ministry. You have to apply by, at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Once you have your skill certificate, according to the Immigration Division, it is recognized you do get six months stay. If you want to stay longer, you go into the Immigration Service and indicate you want six more months. And they said that that's a request that nine times out of 10, they accommodate. As well, if you're bringing your spouse, your spouse, once you get six months, your spouse will come in with six months as well. They do not give more than six months. They don't give a six months visa for a child. They give you something called a student visa, which is for a year. To get that student visa, you have to show that you have a legitimate reason for being in the country for a year. So if you plan, if you, uh, if you, wouldn't, if you were to move with your child, you would have to have some kind of contract illustrating more than The other aspect of temporary stay is if you may not have the qualification, so you might not have a degree or you might not have a CVQ, but you have a contract, they will allow you to come in for six months at the border with your contract. You have to come with the contract in your hand to illustrate how long the contract is, but they do allow you to stay for six months. If the contract is more than a year, then you, you go for the, after six months, you go to the immigration division you're, and they will give you an extension for six months again. They give extensions up for six, every six months up to two years. After two years, can you go back? Go back from there. But if you also have the year contract, then your, your spouse gets a year as well, easily. You can go actually next day, once you arrive in Barbados, and you can get a year for the spouse and your child as well. And the, child, the student visa is up every year. Um, establishing a commercial presence. If a, comp if a company is interested in establishing a commercial presence in Barbados, they have to physically apl apply at the Corporate Affairs Office. Um, and companies that are interested in moving their senior management and their technical, key technical persons, when they apply, have to submit the following, a valid passport, a return ticket, a proof of the person's financial re resources to maintain themselves. 